Hi! Welcome to my kitchen and freezer tutorial for RimWorld. I'm Icon and this video shall guide you through all the necessary knowledge to put up a working kitchen and freezer unit. I put these two topics together because I feel like they are highly synergistic and I don't know of any drawbacks of combining those. But more about that later. In the first half of the video I will guide you through the sheer construction process, a few necess necessities and tips and tricks in between, and the second half of the video will be all about the numbers, some ideas and some thoughts about optimizing this whole process and what you really need to do and what you don't need to do. I have a lot of things considering refrigeration in this video up my sleeve. So let's get right started, shall we? So first off, I'm not using any content mods for this tutorial, but there are there is one mod recommendation I will do alongside of the video. So now a freezer unit is always consisting out of a pair of walls and a door, of course, because you can't regulate temperatures in RimWorld without the without a closed room. That's just not possible. As soon as there's a door and a roof over a room, it counts as a indoors location, as you can see here at the right uh, lower half of the screen. Only indoors areas can be temperature regulated, whereas outdoors areas can only be manipulated by the seasons, storyteller events and such. So to get the freezer working in the first place, we need a stockpile zone because we want to tell our our people to drop all the foods inside there. To achieve that, you drag it down there. First, I like to clear them all and just put the check mark into foods. If there's anything else you want to put in there, I would strongly recommend you to also store the animal corpses inside there so fresh butcher wares will be dropped inside there as well. Take care that you remove the, uh, the check mark on allow rotten because you don't want any rotten food in your refrigerator. It's already spoiled. There's no usage for that stuff whatsoever. All right. Now, as you see here, we have an indoors temperature of 16 degrees and there is, of course, spoilage happening. So let's allow tutorial woman to haul those berries inside the room, which shall be our freezer. So to regulate temperatures, we have several tools at our hands. The most popular variant is the cooler and this tutorial will be in the first place focused around that one but i'm also talking going to talk about medieval refrigeration later so a cooler unit needs to be plopped down in this way the blue grid needs to go inside and the red grid needs to go outside simply because every cooler has an exhaust of warm air somewhere so keep that into that direction. Of course, the cooler needs some power. So let's connect that. And there we go. Now the next step is to uh, tell our cooler that we want to have a minus Celsius degree temperature it's happening with these thingies. And then we can watch how the temperature inside there is slowly plummeting. And as soon as minus degrees are reached, we have frozen food. Simple as that. So that's of course not all that is to it. Things get a little bit more complicated when the environment changes, but that's the bare basics of refrigeration. Next to that, I really love to put a kitchen unit right next to the refrigerator. Let's do this and let tutorial woman do her job by creating another roof. So the kitchen area will be consisting out of a stove. You can use the fueled or the electric version as you want to. And besides that, we're going to drop some flooring. You can either go for no flooring at all or preferably some sterile tiles to make less food poisonings happen, whatever you want to choose. Sterile tiles are the optimal choice if you want to go really crazy, but you can also go stone floors. The flooring is not that important. What's really important though is dirt is influencing your kitchen. So with this setup here, as you see here, there's only one way inside entering the, ki the kitchen and that's through the freezer. That's good because you're 
configurations in the work schedule will make it so that only the cook will enter the kitchen to cook something and then he will put the finished meal back inside the freezer. Hungry people will now only enter the freezer, grab their meal and never enter the kitchen. That's good because everybody drags filth with them. So that's just the basics of kitchen product uh, of kitchen setup and I don't want to deepen that topic here anymore besides the fact that standing lamps are good for you as long as they're powered because light influences working speed so whatever you want work happening put lights down so they work faster or don't and accept a slower work sometimes you have to all right so this is how you can put up a very simple and effective freezing unit the stove well these menus here are modded so dubs mint menus if you want to know what where i don't want to talk too much about how to set up those builds because it's pretty simple you just select the bill and then you can choose how often something has to be produced this is basic bill configurations the kitchen doesn't work different from any work table in the game so next step i really like to do in the freezers is to drop my butcher table also into the freezer to have a really low work Com uh, commute between butchering and dropping down the materials because this way the corpses will be dropped into the stockpile zone and the cook will go and pick up the corpse from the stockpile zone butcher it inside here which is suboptimal because it's too cold you know not only light is influencing your work speed negatively cold is so too but that's a drawback I really take into account because butchering makes insane amounts of filth, uh, produces insane amounts of filth. But the good news is, your food can be, the freezer can be as filthy as it wants to be. It doesn't influence the food poisoning chances of your colonists whatsoever. It doesn't really change anything. So you leave the dirt in the freezer and this way you can keep the kitchen clean, which is quite, quite good. So to finish off the topic of building freezers, I want to talk about coolers and, well, their, effect, uh, their efficiency and effectiveness. A cooler can only tackle so and so much heat around him. So my personal approach is I always put down at least two coolers into every single freezer unit. Keep in mind that you have to configure every single one of them. That's simply because even though this room has been cooled by just one cooler successfully as soon as a heat wave plugs in there's a high chance of your um of one cooler not, not anymore tackling this also if i want to expand that one day the larger the room the more cooler power we need so as a rule of thumb i always feel like if i'm not in a too hot environment two coolers are mostly enough for rooms of these uh of these uh, size and in hot environments I always like to build at least three coolers in very cool environments you basically can do with just one cooler if if any so another real cool trick to increase the efficiency of your freezer unit without adding more coolers is just adding another layer of wall around it in this scenario, of course, we have to take into account that these need to stay open, but the game does insulate better if there are just two layers of wall around the room. If you can't afford more free and more coolers, this is a really easy way to increase the insulation if it's really necessary. I never needed it, but I thought like it is a net nifty thing to know. Beyond that, there is not really much to, to note about uh, freezing. I just want to talk about the replace stuff mod which is one of my favorite mods because it allows you to do one thing. I want to show you why I like that mod so much. Let's turn off the dev mode for a moment because there's one problem with the base game. You can to, you you might be able to just put a work order over that but if you look at that they're first deconstructing the wall and then they're reconstructing the cooler as a new unit of the wall and that's something i really don't like about this game 
and replace stuff not only allows you to do to replace these things directly because in the normal game you would need without the mod you would need to remove the wall and then place down the blueprint the mod makes it easier also replace stuff in introduces the overwall cooler which is simply said a cooler which doesn't leave a hole in your wall if any raider decides to destroy this uh, cooler because the logic of raiders is really funny they love to destroy coolers first simply because if you look at here sandstone wall has 420 hp cooler has only 100 hp and i'll show you what happens so if that thing here gets bashed down tutorial woman off you go So if the raider attacks here, you have instantaneously, in, instantaneously a hole in your freezer, which transforms him into an outdoors region. And if the overwall cooler gets destroyed, the wall is still here. I personally feel like that's a realism factor, which I really approve and enjoy, because I really don't know of any cooling units which are, which are the wall. So <laughs> just wanted to recommend that. And that's the end of the theory of the part where I talk about how to build freezers. Now, let's talk about refrigeration, the necessity of refrigeration and medieval refrigeration. I want to talk about medieval refrigeration first because I feel like that's one of the most interesting topics, topics to begin with. Medieval people, like tribal people, only have access to the passive cooler. The passive cooler is an interesting thing. It has a simple function which is simply said it tries to adjust the room's temperature towards 21 degree if the temperature is above 21 degree sounds complicated but simply said a cooler can never reduce a room's temperature below 21 degree and if it's cooler than 21 degree well, that thing does simply nothing but therefore the passive cooler is not used for refrigeration what so Ever. because the game has no interaction like food spoils faster because it's too warm it's only food food spoils slower because it's cool or it's spoiling normal speed so don't think passive coolers would do anything for your refrigeration in a medieval run but I made the experience that in a medieval run I came out with almost no refrigeration needs whatsoever. That's simply because you can do things very easy. So first thing worth mentioning, potatoes, rice and corn are really long lasting foods. They have shelf times of 30 to 60 days. And usually my experience was that during this time, the food has been either eaten or replaced by fresher food. In a medieval refrigeration system, there is a regular spoilage of food due to that, which you can delay or hint or or wait a sec, which you can delay or completely shut down with the usage of pemmican. Pemmican is a extremely long-lasting food, which is a, which you have access to when you have a tribal gameplay right from the scratch, and basically you mix meat with plants and turn it into an insanely long-lasting food, which eliminates the necessity of refrigeration whatsoever. So my basic go-to strategy is gather up plants and hunt that meat and turn it into pemmican. And meat is preferably cooked into meals to make the most out of it and everything else goes into pemmican. Don't do the mistake to think that pemmican would be only a caravan food in medieval environments it's an excellent way to provide sustenance for your colony and avoiding lengthy refrigeration methods of course this all applies also to modern uh, colonies where you have energy shortages or power shortages or resource shortages oh, energy and power i wanted to say resource shortages um so when you don't have the necessary stuff to build coolers in any means, like sea ice, for example, would be, I don't know, sea ice has constant minus degrees. Desert environments and such are a good example. You can't just uh, postpone the refrigeration uh, completely. The only thing worth mentioning is if you don't have a freezer, meat is not a solid 
foundation for your cookery as long as you don't have access to pemmican. Beyond that, I think I have already said all that ha needs to be said about cooking and refrigeration. The larger a room gets, the more coolers he needs, as I already mentioned. And yeah, I think that's about it. You should now know whatever you need to know to keep your food fresh or survive without refrigeration whatsoever. I hope this was helpful for you. Leave me a comment down below if there are any questions open whatsoever or if you feel like there's something you forgot, feel free to add it into the comments because this is by no means a contest. I'd be more than happy if you guys had ideas I didn't come up with. This is a sandbox game after all. Also leave this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you and consider a subscription to my channel if you want to stay tuned for more sandbox or RimWorld content in general. Have a nice day and goodbye.